Welcome to Friday Night Spotlight, brought to you by Jones Ford Buick GMC, your hometown dealer for more than 50 years. I'm Brian Wright, and I am joined by Maria Vasquez, and we are talking more Pinal County High School football, and we are now in week two after getting things back on track uh, last week, and we're going to get right into talking about our game of the week, which is Coolidge going on the road to Santa Cruz, and this is our second week in a row that we featured Coolidge. They had a big rivalry game against Florence in week one, uh, which they were able to win 47-43. And uh, now they play another big rival uh, in Santa Cruz. And Coolidge did look very good, uh, at least certainly offensively in, in week one against Florence. They got a new quarterback, Jacob Gunter, who did throw for over 300 yards and uh, four touchdowns, which is, you know, a, a, the passing element hasn't really been a big factor for Coolidge in uh, recent years. It's mainly just been the run game. So uh, that was big for Coolidge last week. But Maria, let's talk about this matchup against uh, Santa Cruz and what do you see uh, out of this game? So last week Santa Cruz played uh, Santan Charter and the big thing that stuck out for me was their defense. Now they only allowed 79 total yards of offense and they had nine tackles for a loss, four sacks, one interception and a fumble recovery. Now, this is really big given that, you know, Santa Cruz is kind of flying under the radar for a lot of people in 2A. Yeah, that game, Santa Cruz played week one. I covered that game against Santan Shutter. Uh, Arizona Republic had Santan Shutter picked number one or at least close to number one in the 2A rankings preseason. And this was maybe the most lopsided game I've ever seen. Um, certainly, uh, right up there. It was a 61 to nothing win for Santa Cruz. It probably wasn't even that close. Uh, you had Hunter Ogle going off for 240 rushing yards, three touchdowns, uh, and the Santa Cruz defense, which Maria mentioned was fantastic. Um, a couple of standouts were Robert Maldonado, who had two sacks and a forced fumble, and you had Steve Calvin uh, coming down with an interception. Um, Maria, again, looking at Coolidge versus Santa Cruz, um, how do you kind of see this one playing out? Well, uh, for me, you know, Santa Cruz is really good at stopping the run game, but I wonder how they're going to do handling Coolidge, Coolidge's passing game. And then for Coolidge, is, can they stop Santa Cruz's running game? Yeah, and uh, Coolidge, I mentioned earlier that their uh, quarterback really had a huge game last week, throwing for over 300 yards with four touchdowns. Uh, but you can't forget about Greg Rodriguez, who's a fantastic running back. Uh, he had 158 yards rushing and a touchdown last week and uh, you had two wide receivers for Coolidge really go off in Connor Ferguson and Tad Lynch. Uh, both of those guys had over 100 yards uh, and a couple touchdowns apiece. Um, Maria, uh, what's kind of your uh, bottom line for this game? How do you see this one playing out? Um, I see Coolidge making an effort to slow down Santa Cruz's running game, but they just have so many options besides Hunter Ogle. They have David Ovulus, um, Ricardo Alanis, and even Wyatt Ogle. Yeah, and uh, you just mentioned Wyatt Ogle. He's the taking over at quarterback now. He's the younger brother of Hunter Ogle. And I think one nice thing that he brings to Santa Cruz is he brings an element of speed to the quarterback position that they maybe haven't had in a little while. So defenses have to worry about him taking off uh, for big runs as well when he has the ball. All right, that does it for our breakdown on the game of the week. And enjoy the games on Friday night. All right, we are going to move into our picks portion of the program and starting off with our week two picks, we're going to have the game of the week, which is Santa Cruz and Coolidge. And I expect a really close game in this one. Um, this is a great rivalry. you got two good teams, but I covered Santa Cruz last week and they were so impressive in their blowout over Santan Charter. I really think that uh, Santa Cruz is on a mission this year. I am going to take the Dust Devils in this one. And I will be covering that game, so I do not get a pick. Next, we have CG Union hosting Lake Havasu, and this is a Thursday night game. Um, last week, I covered CG Union. They had a pretty solid outing against South Point Catholic, and um, I'm picking the Cougars in this one. You know, last week, uh, Havasu, they struggled a bit against Glendale. They're a really good team, but I'm taking the Cougars. And I will be covering that game, so I do not have a pick in that one. Next, we have Vista Grande going on the road to Phoenix St. Mary's. And uh, Vista Grande got off the schneid last uh, week, breaking, snapping a 17-game losing streak, uh, getting a win over Shadow Mountain. 
Uh, quarterback Donald Altaffer had uh, a couple of passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. Uh, however, um, I do think that uh, you know this team is still going to have its ups and downs. And St. Mary's rushed for 265 yards last week in a loss to ALA Queen Creek. I'm going to take St. Mary's in this one. I'm also taking St. Mary's. Uh, Brian mentioned it. You know they played ALA Queen Creek last last week, one of the top teams um, in their conference this year, and it's going to be tough for the Spartans to slow down running back James Atkinson. So. I'm taking St. Mary's. Next, we have Maricopa hosting Canyon View, and really, so really solid outing for Maricopa last week. You have quarterback uh, Cipriano Childers, who did a phenomenal job for his first start on varsity. Yeah, so I'm gonna take Maricopa in this game. Um, I think, like Maria said, you know, we didn't know who was gonna start a quarterback for the Rams, and. Uh, what a great debut for Cipriano Childers, who is a senior. Uh, he threw four touchdowns in that debut. And of course, you have Mr. Chavis, who is uh, a phenomenal running back for uh, Maricopa. So I'm going to take the Rams in that one. Next, we have Florence. Um, they're going to be at home against Fountain Hills. And I am going to take Florence in this one. Uh, great showdown with Coolidge in week one. The game kind of could have gone either way. Um, a good sign for Florence last week was quarterback Christopher Walter um, stepping up, and he had a nice game, passed for 266 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, I'll take the Gophers in this one. I'm also taking the Gophers. Um, there's still some little miscues they need to clean up on defense, but I like their chances against Fountain Hills this week. Next, we have Post and Butte playing Arcadia. Now, this is technically kind of a Pinal County matchup between our head coaches, given that um, coach Vance Miller used to coach at Post and Butte, so he's pretty familiar, you know, with our Pinal County teams. But despite that fact, I'm going with the Broncos. Last week, uh, their defense was really impressive: 12 tackles for a loss, three sacks, and one fumble recovery. Uh, just a quick correction there: Vance Miller did coach at AJ, so uh, and he is now at Arcadia. But uh, I am going to take Post and Butte in this one. Um, they had uh, Zion Burns, who's you know a superstar running back uh, for the Broncos. He rushed for 122 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week. And uh, Gavin Lloyd uh, only had three pass attempts, uh, but he did have a couple of touchdowns. Uh, so I'm taking the Broncos uh, to beat Arcadia. Next, we got Combs uh, at home against Tempe. And uh, Combs had a really tough draw in week one they had to play 5a sierra vista buena a very good buena team um so even though they lost that game uh i am going to take combs to rebound here and get the win i mean i love running back joey jensen uh for combs and uh i think that the coyotes are going to bounce back this week I'm also taking the, the Coyotes. Brian mentioned their running game. There wasn't much of it last week. They only had um, 29 total yards as a team rushing, but I'm, I'm expecting them to also bounce back this week, and I'm taking the Coyotes. Next, we have Santan Foothills traveling to ALA Gilbert North. Now, the Sabercats really struggled defending um, Arizona College Prep's passing game last week. They're getting another good passing team this week, and, you know, I think they're going to struggle a bit. Yeah, I agree with Maria. Um, I'm going to take ALA Gilbert North. They do have a, a pretty high-flying uh, passing attack. Um, but one good note for Santan Foothills is, you know, they had to replace star running back Amari Bailey, and uh, Gavin Leach had a big game for them last week, 224 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, but I am going to go with uh, ALA Gilbert North. Next, we have Apache Junction going on the road to Prescott. And, uh, you know, AJ, it's kind of a reset year for them. And uh, they have, you know, a new coach and a, a lot of new players. Uh, so this one's a little bit tough to handicap. Um, but I am going to take uh, the prospectors in this game. And I think they are going to get uh, their first win in this one. And I'm going to go with Prescott. Last week it was a tough task for um, AJ to go up against the defending champion Mesquite. And, you know, that didn't turn out very well for them. This week they're going to have to slow down 
running back, Nathan Wright, and uh, I'm still trying to figure out what the prospectors' defense, um, what their strength is. You know, is it slowing down the passing game or the running game? So until I can figure that out, I have to go with Prescott. Next, we have ALA Ironwood hosting Cortez, and I think this is gonna this is gonna be the game where the Warriors finally get that first win. Um, I think they're kind of really balanced against Cortez, but I think quarterback Kyle Johnson is going to be the difference maker. He just has more experience at the at that position than um, what Cortez's guys do. Uh, I agree with Mar Maria on this one. Um, even though ALA Ironwood, like she said, had been been searching for a win for a very long time. Uh, winless again last year, but uh, I think you know they, they get a little bit of a break in the schedule here. Uh, Cortez has really struggled uh, as well, and I think that uh, the Warriors can take advantage, and uh, Kyle Johnson uh, does give them a good shot, so um, I got ALA Ironwood. And our last game is uh, Sequoia Pathway hosting Tombstone, and Sequoia Pathway, uh, you know, first season in the AIA, coming up from the CAA, they had a big win last week going on the road to Bisbee, so that's a nice, um, you know, debut for them in the AIA. Uh, they they had a quarterback um, throw for uh, sorry Alex Montano is the quarterback. He threw for five touchdowns last week, and uh, I like Sequoia Pathway to uh, get a second win this week. I'm also taking the Pumas. Last week, I thought Montano was going to be kind of the difference maker. He was, but then you also have Isaiah Stewart, who had 291 total yards. So I'm taking the Pumas this week again. All right, that does it for our picks. Remember to visit PinalCentral.com for all of your Pinal County high school football action, and we will see you next week.